All right, we're going to do a Git Rebase Interactive. We have a scenario here that is pretty common. I've seen it a lot where you want to have a really nice looking Git history, but you're in a rush to fix something and you forget to do a semantic commit message or you forget to squash and somehow you end up with a situation like this where you have this commit earlier where you added a function and then you found out later that actually this person Amanda actually goes by Mandy and you need to change it to be the Mandy function and you rushed it out there to fix it because it was wrong so if we take a look at the Amanda function that was simply just Amanda a okay and then we wanted to hurry up and fix it this person goes by Mandy it needs to be M it's their you know birth name it's their given name Mandy they weren't even named Amanda and so you had to get it out there okay and so we need to fix the situation here because we want one commit with a proper commit message and we don't need to really see that we started off with Amanda and switch to Mandy. Some places might disagree with this. They want the true history. You know, if this were say a fix later, you know, they decided they to change the requirements, then that might be an update to the feature or it might be a bug fix. But, but in this case, you were trying to just get this first thing in there and for whatever reason, you kind of messed it up and now you have this history that does not look the way that you want. So we need to fix this. And I'll be using Vim Fugitive to do the interactive rebase. It's really no different than doing it on the command line as far as how it works. It's just that you get to stay in Vim and you have some nice shortcuts and it comes together really well. But we'll do a separate video on this where we just do it from the terminal. But Fugitive will really save you time and is really convenient. So let's go ahead and go into our main branch and we'll open up a file here. And you can see we changed to Mandy. And you'll note too that uh, GitHub has changed the branches from master to main. And so when you create new repos, you'll see that now. And so that'll take some adjusting on the local side from when you create a Git repo by default locally and then want to push it up. So that's a whole other video. But anyway, we'll check this out here and let's get this fixed up so that we have a history that looks like we got it right the first time and looks clean and we're able to go back and and uh, make sense of things all right so first we'll give this a g log here which is just git log in fugitive all right and then you can see here there's you know change amanda to mandy and then we have uh, add Amanda function, which is what we kind of want. We want these squashed. And so before all of this was messed up, we were down here at the commit beforehand, which was the add the K and C funks, which was before the Amanda function. So what we want to do is grab the commit Shaw here and I just copied it to my system clipboard with Vim and that's an another video on how you can easily do that but you can do that however you like. I have it copied to my system clipboard but I don't really need that because as long as 
the cursor is on the hash, if I just type in RI, it takes me into a rebase interactive right here in Vim. What I want is to have the first commit that you see right here. And I want this to actually change to be add Mandy function. And then I want to squash the change Amanda to Mandy, which is not a semantic commit message. So the first thing to do here is to, we want to keep this, but we want to reword it. So let me make this an R. Okay. And then for change Amanda to Mandy, I want to squash it from here. We'll go ahead and we'll get out of that. And that takes us to where we can rename our commit message. And so if we go over here and we say Mandy and we write that out. Yeah. We now have completed the rebase. So if we go here, close this up and right there, and we'll close up this old log. And now if we give it the G log, we'll see that we have this add Mandy function, which contains the change Amanda to Mandy. And so that's fine. And then we have the uh, initial commit from before. That's great. We know that's there. And so we will go ahead and get out of this. And then what we want to do is see where we're at here. Great. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and push this. So, and we know that this is main and it's not going to want to push this because I've rewritten history. And so we're going to have to force it and we'll give it a second and it appears to be done. So if we go over here to this and refresh, we have now add Mandy function and that. And if we go into add Mandy function, we'll see that we have the Mandy function here and we're good. And so now the commit history looks good. Now we could have also removed this extra description that got added into the body, but that's okay. That can tell us what happened there. But the key is to have this nice, pretty history here. And then we're not covering our tracks here. This just sort of shows us what happened here. You know, I uh, probably should have removed the description as well, but hey, you get the point. And so that works fine. And that's how you do it with Vim Fugitive. And it's pretty much the same thing when you do it on the command line.